Hi, I'm Paul Rodolavich from Synergy Electrical Sales. Today I'm going to show you the basics of wired ceiling mounted occupancy sensors. They're a sensor that has a power pack and an occupancy sensor. I'm going to show you the basics to understand troubleshooting, installation, and specification as you're working with these. Just a basic overview. All right, so here's the basic components that we have. We have both our power pack and our motion sensor. Let's look at the power pack first. So we have our line voltage in and our neutral. And then if we're actually going to control our lights from this, then we're going to bring in one of the red wires bring connected to the hot. And this would be our switch leg out for the power packs. Power pack, in addition to just switching the lights on and off, creates low voltage, which powers our motion sensor. Now different power packs can have different output voltages. This is important when you're troubleshooting because just because you have a power pack and a wired occupancy sensor, they're not necessarily going to work together. So this one, for instance, puts 24 volts out over the red wire to power the motion sensor. There's some that'll work on 20 and there's some that also work on 12 volts. So that's important to think about as well on the power pack. Coming out of it, we have our three wires. Like I said, we have our 24 volts which is going to power our motion sensor. We have our common wire, and then we have our signal wire. And the way that the, the sensor works as far as turning the lights on and off is when that sensor um, closes this, lights turn on. When it opens, lights turn off. If you have multiple motion sensors, every manufacturer is different, but typically one power pack can control, or excuse me, can power three motion sensors. So you could wire three of these in parallel with our signal wire and get them to sense motion. Here's our motion sensor. This is a dual technology sensor, which means it has infrared motion sensing right here in the middle. And then on the side, it has ultrasonic motion sensing for fine motion as well. So we had to do some adjustments for this. Pop off the cover here, and that gives us the access to dip switches, which we can make some adjustments to it as well. Um, just to cover the wiring, again, we see a replication of our red, black, and blue wiring on this as well. Now, some motion sensors, I'm going to show another one here, we have quite a few wires. Well, additional wires can be for a few things. They can be a dry contact output to a motion excuse me, to an HVA system. We see that a lot of times in schools where they take a dry contact and put it into the air handler into a classroom so that when the room becomes unoccupied, the air handler shuts off. Some can wire into switches as well. So the key is there's a basic system architecture we're showing you, but they're not always the same thing here. Um, some of them can monitor ambient light. There's all kinds of good things that they can do. Um, as far as the adjustments, some things you want to think about is how you put the motion sensor in test mode. Um, that's important because if you're in a situation where someone's saying the lights aren't turning off, you want to be able to put it in test mode, leave the room momentarily, and see if the lights go off. Uh, some motion sensors also have an automatic um, time adjustment. So that's one of the subtle things to understand, but it's if you're in the room, it senses how long you're typically in there, how long you're vacant, and that's how long it actually sets the timeout period on the sensor.